good money, mommy. Give your child a champion head start each day with Milo. The time by Milo, the energy food drink of champions is... 15 minutes to 8 o'clock. So we flew wide open the door. Yes, Good morning. How are you? I'm well. Good to have you inside the guest room this morning. Folks, it's Lawrence Alfred Good Delano Williams. I'm telling you. Lawrence Alfred Delano Doctor. Williams. Please. Doctor. Yeah. Isn't it Professor? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Adjunct Professor at the University of Technology. You want to go ahead now? University of Technology. Go on. You're, you're all exciting. Go on. I am because... Um, I rarely see that combination of zoology and chemistry. And uh, this is where he's coming from with an honors degree in zoology and chemistry. But then it gets even better than that because he, he did insect toxicology and natural products. I don't know what natural products are, but... Those are if compounds you come, some plants. If you, if, oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> natural, so after he says insect toxicology, and then he says natural products. So like you kill the insects, I use them make, <laughs> so make soap <laughs> or medicine. <laughs> I use the plants, so... Oh, thank goodness you clarified. Oh. <laughs> you know, you should have the doctor later this week because there's an insect question later this week oh, in battle Lord. your parents. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doc, um, really, um, chemistry and zoology, I, no, I'm serious, I, that is not a combination that I've heard of often. Uh, chemistry, if you chemistry do, and if you physics, do. biology and zoology, but chemistry and, and zoology. Yeah. So how you know how to kill them if you don't know the chemistry? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very lucrative area. Uh, oh. Natural products and zoology. Yeah. These are the compounds that are um, produced by plants. Yes. And we isolate them from plants to check, uh, to test them against insects. And uh, if you find a good one, you can make a lot of money. Out of You've it. got to be a little bit more specific on that for me because it's sounding interesting, but I want to hear more. Um, tell me, tell me, how the what natural products from plants and how do insects come into that? Okay, when I started my PhD in 1987, I decided to look at Jamaican plants and their effect on insects. Mm -hmm. So what you do, you extract these plants compound and then add it to insects and see if it kills them. Because you, 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 you are trying to find something that will kill the insects? Yeah, insecticide. You okay. insect killer, you! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those pesky invaders. <laughs> okay, so, and, and have you been successful? Yes, we got some good hits when I was doing my PhD, but um, after the PhD program, I went into pharmaceutical research mm -hmm. and um, what we found out is that one of the plants called the guinea hen weed oh yes uh, kills uh, kill insects very readily and it's a very powerful repellent and um, when you find plants that kill insects and what you do is to check and see if it's toxic to animals and we found that when you inject the guinea hen weed compound into mice the, it caused the thymus to regrow. The thymus is an organ in the mm -hmm. in the chest that when, when it starts to die off or involute, you become prone to degenerative diseases. Mm -hmm. So it suggests to us that this compound called dibenzyl trisulfide in the guinea hen weed can reprogram the thymus and make you become young again and prevent <laughs> disease from developing. Is that right? Yeah. So is that why they give them to... Who do they give them to? They, the, the rabbits eat it and the, the guinea hen weed. Yeah, goats eat guinea, it. Goat. Isn't it guinea grass you give to rabbits? But I, the goats eat the guinea hen weed. Yes, yes. So and somebody told me that anything a goat eat <laughs> is promising. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. <laughs> No, but this is this is this is quite interesting. So, do you also uh, deal with things 
that repel insects. Yeah. And you look for, because you know they say that, I mean, there are certain leaves mm -hmm. that will repel flies, certain leaves re repel mosquitoes yeah. and things like that. And is that real? You found that to be an actual scientific fact? Yes, because you can validate the repellency using what you call an olfactometer. That is, you put the odor of the plant material in these uh, chambers, then release the insects and they will move away from the extract or the plant material. So you can actually put scientific measurements to these um, responses. And you have a, a lab that you do this in when you get up in the morning? Yes. And you go to the lab with the leaves? No, now I'm looking at um, <laughs> cancer research. Oh. Because the guinea hen weed compound is one of the most powerful compounds that are um, effective against in, uh, cancers. Is that right? Right, right. Well, I'm going to ask you a very difficult question. Isn't it possibly true that plant material is the way to to combat cancer and not all of these drugs created in labs i would think so because the plant material sometimes what you find is that they are less toxic mm -hmm. compared to the synthetic uh, drugs that are used to treat in cancer chemotherapy mm -hmm. right so tell me what you're studying now in the plant material and how it will you know interact with cancerous cells and help us to deal with that okay what i'm doing now is looking at the the compound called dibenzyl trisulfide isolate from the guinea hen weed and we are looking at the broad spectrum anti-cancer activity of that molecule we have no, you went, you went over it too fast. Say it again slowly because I'm, I want to process this. The what trisulfide? Dibenzyl trisulfide. Where is that found? In the guinea hen weed. Okay. And we have isolated that as one of the active compounds that kill cancer cells. Really? It kills over 12 types of cancer. And we have come up with a formulation of this guinea hen weed now that's on the market. Uh, Dr. Williams' original Guinea and Weed formula. Okay. <laughs> yes, and you can... And that's on the market. Yeah. And it's it's good for... Okay, what we found also is that not only cancer will it go um, help in treating, but also treats um, degenerative diseases in, in, to in total. So if you have diabetes, arthritis, hypertension, this molecule seems to work on those diseases. You're making a very big claim. Yeah. And this is something that you have now proven that your guinea hen weed can treat with all of these ailments. Yeah. Diabetes. Yeah. Hypertension. Because cancer. And free radical diseases. There, the, the, there's a process called glycation that takes place in the human body where glucose binds to albumin and produce free radicals. This free radical that is produced in the body causes over 50 diseases that degenerate the human body. And we have found that this DTS has a very strong affinity to bind to albumin and prevent free radicals from taking place and makes you healthy. Let me ask you another hard question because you're <laughs> getting into areas where there are hard questions. Yeah. So why would the guinea hen weed be so good at all of this? One simple plant would be so good at all of this. Or are there other plants that might have something in them just like the guinea hen weed? Yes, but we have not tested all the plants so far. Okay. Right. And um, the guinea hen weed, it has a unique mode of action. It works in a very part, 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 particular way where it, it binds to what you call tyrosine receptors. Okay. Now... <coughs> 
folks, let me let me just let you know that in addition, uh, Doc Professor Williams has published over seventy four papers and has presented fifty papers at local and international conferences. Do these all have to do with? Uh, I mean, has your focus really been on the Guinea hen weed? Yes, we say that we have published sixteen papers on the Guinea hen weed so far. And when you publish the paper, I mean, saying that you publish the paper, that sounds good and all of that, but you just published it. Are they tested? In the process of publishing, you will test the... No, you get to test it. But does somebody else test what you tested? Yes. In fact, out of the Guinea hen weed research, there's a guy named Harian from China. He has tested the same compound and found it to be active against um, a wide range of human cancer cells. And they have synthesized a derivative, a slight derivative of the DTS, and they have that non-human clinical trial in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this research has taken you all over the world. I noticed you were yeah. in Germany at one point at the University of Hohenheim. Yeah, Hohenheim. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing there? <laughs> I I went there to work on... Um, they have good uh, separation chemistry facilities and molecular biology centers. And I was there to work on the isolates of the Guinean weed at another plant they call... Bontier. It's also called kidney bush. We isolate a compound. Kidney bush? Never yeah. heard of that one yet. <laughs> yes, man. It has a lot of mannitol in it, so it works for the kidney. Mannitol. Yeah. Okay. And you were working on kidney bush in Germany. Yeah. Where you get kidney bush from in Germany? <laughs> we, we brought it from Jamaica. Okay. So we made the extracts in Jamaica and uh. then traveled to Germany to isolate these fantastic molecules. Oh my gosh, did you get any chance to, to see what else was being done in Germany? I mean, these are the plants that you were working on. Were you able to interact with other scientists doing this kind yeah. of work? What, what in, were some of the... In fact, what when I went to Germany, the chemistry department was working in isolation with, with the, with the, uh, against the zoology department. And I told my professor that we can join do giant research and make some very interesting breakthroughs. Yeah. That's right. And they said this never happened before. <laughs> so we're going to try it now. <laughs> and we come up on a program where the zoologists would prepare the cancer cell lines uh -huh. and we isolate the compounds and then test them and then have giant papers. And it was very productive. We published over 15 papers. Oh, wow. In, 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 in three years. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you know, it, it is good that even though it's, it's, it's not even though, that we are able to take our folk medicine or beliefs and to, to test them, to validify them in some cases, to dispel some that are myths. But at the end of the day, we're learning how to use natural products to enhance health and life. And, and you've spent your life sorting this out. I was looking online for kidney bush. The only thing I find is bushes, dark red kidney beans. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we're going to have to talk off Guinea here. Guinea and weed. Just, just work on that one. <laughs> yeah, Guinea and weed. It's very powerful. And um, I would like to see some clinical trials now. We got a patent on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the patent covers um, degenerative disease and cancer. And we are about to do some clinical trials now and see if we can get it onto the market. We are definitely going to look forward to that because this is uh, a little more eye-opening than I thought. We're talking to uh, Dr. Law Professor Lawrence Williams, who is working through chemistry, zoology on guinea hen weed and its effects of on cancer. Thank you well, very much for coming you. by. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in. You're welcome. We'll continue to watch out for your bush. Yes. <laughs> 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 You're listening to RJR. We are inside our Sunny Side Up Morning Show. And coming up, we've got the BBC World News. Checking on traffic on the other side of the hour.